So we are at uh, REI 2025 and we are uh, with us, uh, CNHR is there. So uh, CNHR's journey in India uh, has been very early on journeys for, uh, for the floating solar field and floating solar is quite a new technology to India. So could you please describe uh, like how it is and how uh, CNHR so far fared? Okay, so uh, good evening. So CNHR right, we started in 2018 in India and from 2018 in India right now that time right, we are having around 50 kilowatt and 500 kilowatt that capacity size. From there, right, 500 kilowatt to uh, 500 megawatt is the scaling we have done over a period of less last eight years now. And uh, we started in 2010 and uh, Selita, the first global project, uh, megawatt scale is in Japan in 2012. Uh, from there, right now, we have done more than 340 projects in 32 countries with uh, 3.1 uh, portfolio, I mean, gigawatt of portfolio of floating solar. So we are the pioneer then and we are the global leaders now. And in India, right, we, we have been you know, instrumental in catering the floating business. Uh, we have been in, working with the MNRE, we are working with the SECI, we are working with the nodal agencies uh, for sharing our know-how to give standardizations, to work on the, you know, guidelines and baselines. Uh, so, uh, in order to ensure you know, like a minimum quality has been uh, ascertained in, in the tenders. So we are working with you know, all these agencies to ensure you know, like a, a, a reputable quality, you know, like a projects are happening. And since we have been the, the leaders for the last, let's say, 15 years, experience, expertise, the experience has converted into expertise. And you know, you know, as I said, you know, like when you've done 340 projects in 32 countries in five continents with their manufacturing, the, the experience, the amount of experience you are getting in different project sites are unparalleled, unprecedented. I think right there we, we have some you know, responsibility as a global leader to cater the Indian market, floating market also because it's the untapped potential in India. So uh, what steps have you taken to reduce the uh, customer resistance and improve their trust for floating solar? So see customers you know like it's, it's, it's a niche technology then. Now right it's been proven solution right mm -hmm. now like you see right uh, close to 1 gigawatt of 1.5 gigawatt of floating projects in India. It's a testament of you know, like it has been accepted in the market. So the, the from the niche technology now it has you know some understanding. Okay, the the customer, I mean the the investors has got the confidence. When you have a confidence in investors, you now automatically right now you will be getting a lot of projects. You know that projects viability has been opened up, the channel has been opened up, and then right with the progressive each commissioning there is a boost of you know like a, uh, you know installations and achievements commissioning activities that sort of news is giving a lot of push and you know next level of you know aggravation to the customers and uh, to the investors and then right we have i mean we believe right you now like uh, in india un 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 untapped potentials so big projects right if let's say begin a big reservoirs hardly three to four percentage of you know water body will be covered or maybe five percent covered so you know the issues which is having with the locals can be avoided when you do a proper site selections, we can go to many places where you know there are you know, like no local uh, you know people's de dependencies, and the living out of fishermen will not be impacted. So we can choose in you know, a lot of a number of you know areas where you know there is no fisherman activities, and you know the the, the living out of fishermen is not being you know affected. We need to go with that way, and then again you know it's all about you know integration and you know empowering them and giving education awareness. So we can help the local community and we can give them a skill training to them because you know like uh, they, 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 we are giving them an opportunity for them to upgrade the skills, give them a chance to you know, work on these uh, technologies, you know, upgrading the skills and you know, so that sort of things we can do it and you know, to give you know, like a labor intensity area, right, it will be a big relief for them, they're getting you know, like occupations, uh, you know, job opportunities there, huge potential. So, this is how right you have to convert this you know issues into an opportunity, and then then as I said you know you have a number of areas where you, know, you can do the projects. What you need to do at the fisherman's area. So site selection is important. You need to do that aspects of also because when the floating solar happens, we only do look into the site selection on the wind, uh, bathymetry, many uh, technical aspects. But we also do look into the this kind of issues, you know, like a geo, I mean uh, geography plus the people resistance people in attitude, I don't know how, is there any kind of, you know, conflict of interest is there for them? Is there of any kind of issues are there? If there are issues are there, how we can address them? So, there are 
best options you know is to dilute you know get them into the party give them the skills upgrade the skills give them the jobs and to secure them so and then the awareness will help them to understand you know what is the need of this body so that why it is you know instrumental in getting this area how they are going to get you know getting the local employment to wages to uh, increase their you know better better conditions okay uh, considering the cost factor how does a so floating solar fare against uh, compared to the ordinary solar installations in india settings yeah see see um, uh, we are competing with the ground mount and ground mount and you know floating solar has a small delta for sure but the delta has been negating now has been reduced now thanks to the make in india program i think right uh, when we started you know we were way off but now with the make in india program indigenization local vendor development programs we are doing it and 100% right now we are getting its getting it in india right so that kind of you know cost reduction has been uh, we are able to get considerable negation and then right now engineering lean engineering program is happening where in right now we are doing a lot of optimizations and then you know that uh, the uh, the the breakaway uh, you know in, includes the overall you know, activities you know, optimizations and you know, you know uh, so that sort of things has you know helped to reduce it but you know that good cash is you know you have extra generations okay when you have extra generations what happens you know, like uh, you can negate those you know extra the, the the deficit which you are having in the extra we are having along with the some uh, with the, along with the ground mount for are there any challenges which are worrying the sector apart from uh, like the regulatory or uh, you can say the people acceptance are there any other challenges which are worrying the uh, no no see market? we have a lot of wish list you know with the government you know to get into this you know discounts to get you know like a much more you know better uh, uh, you know support because there are a lot of distress resources are there and then you know we have to use this entity as a separate entity than you know renewable because see uh, the banks has you know certain mandates to to pass on that the loans to that so uh, incentive based you know, schemes we can bring into that you know to floating solar because you know i said you know like more than 300 400 gigawatt of floating solar opportunities are in india so considering the land acquisition delays and many things you know is the best way of you know getting it with the extra generations and many other you know environmental you know uh, support for that um so the policy should be you know we should have a better policy there you know, consistency should be there when the regime changes the ppa is been cancelled or you know we do not do all these things so you know if, uh, we need to ensure the stable you know ppa is in place and converting that then the lending uh, by lending rates for banks lending and they need to give you know uh, open you know green energy projects where in that the thermal also is not coming thermal and other is not coming at a part of this uh, uh, power plant so we need to bifurcate that those sort of things <coughs> i think with uh, local and awareness and with the you know, like experiences what we gathered over a period of time no? i think it's a right time you know to accelerate the market and you know go beyond what we expected for floating solar in india which can be the regional hot spots see any place where you have a lot of water bodies and you know you have a dependency on you know other uh, electricity factors we can you know work to do that um say uh, many coastal areas I mean, water water tap areas like kerala odisha so you see that the coastal belts are there mm -hmm. then you have a lot of what rivers are there and you know you have a lot of dams are there so we have identified more than as i said no 300 gigawatt of you know opportunities are there in india across so there are a lot of reservoirs big reservoirs are dams also. so i think wherever you know the cost of electricity is on a higher side where the transient land the wheeling charges are there where you have you know high land acquisition you you can go for water floating water let's say kerala you don't have any kind of land yeah, yeah. so you have to go for floating solar like that no land acquisition is like a major issues mm -hmm. so wherever you have a delay you have you know uh, issues we need to get that sort of you know uh, areas where we can get a floating market so at the time of installation on ground uh, what are the technical challenges that people are actually facing uh, while installing the solar say we should have a standard guidelines the right thing is that we don't have a standard guidelines for other competitors and they said during installation keep on failing it because it can't we can't blame them but understand is understanding so when you do the turnkey solutions we need to uh, look at from the lessons learned for that right we need to have a incredible you know teamwork understanding of the projects know how and all so uh challenges are there because you know like not at all every project has its own unique design design suits we need 
You can't get you know straight away product yeah. from the rack. Each site has to be studied properly. I to have site condition, tailored you know design suit has to be conceived. Then only we can do that project. You can't have a standard design for multiple projects. You need to have a tailor-made design suit for that. Depends on the topography, the bathymetry, other in SPT results, and then other you know uh, uh, scans. So with that, you will be suit. You will be designing a, a design suit. And from the design suit, we are doing the bow. So we need to understand that each project has its own, you know, like entity. It has to have. It cannot have a, you know, a same, you know, a design for that. Okay. So um, and then the challenges, you know, we are getting a lot of challenges. We are capturing the challenges, rectifying it. Lessons learned are also applying. They say right now insulation also. We are doing parallel insulations. So all this, you know, we are trying to do it just to because of the lessons learned we are. So about the workforce, uh, this is one of the last question. Uh, so skilled workforce requirement, uh, does it changes with the when the technology reaches to water bodies like floating solar? So does it changes or uh, it stays the same? Uh, no, no, skills are required. You know, like you know, see the skills will again depends on the classifications. You know, where the limitations of the scopes and all. So uh, blue lover, I mean, like you have you know many people you know who can work on you know skill learned basis or else without the workforce, a regular workforce. But you know, like uh, as I said, you know, like if you are going, coming as an individual, as a worker, right? You can still work on that without a skill. But oh, each and every project goes on, right? Now you'll have a, you know, you will be amazing the skills. You will be gathering the skills, and then you will, you will be your own. So we cultivated, we nurtured, we we developed, you know, workforce. We train them, we motivate them, we we we, we give them the experience. So after you know few projects, you know, they will be experienced themselves. That's uh, you know, acquiring the skills, and then yes, that's the way right we have to do it. So there are specific talents should be there. We still need to have you know specific talent, <coughs> talent for engineering, other stuffs and all. Uh, I'm sure you know, like with the more projects comes, you know, a lot of people will be hands on, and over a period of time, we will be able to get you know this kind of uh, you know skill developments. We can do that, and then we are working with you know some of the institutions you know to work on. Enhance the skills and all development, skill development schools and all. Uh, that's all from my side. Thank yeah. you so much for this Thank session. You. Thank you.